Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, December 19th, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Washington, D.C. Today, let's start with a sort of interesting vulnerability in ASUS drivers. Uh, this affects some of the higher end ASUS motherboards that are targeting particular gamers and tech enthusiasts that come with the ASUS Sync applications. You typically use ASUS Sync in order to, for example, control LED strips and the like uh, that are often added to these sort of higher end gaming PCs. In exploiting this vulnerability, an attacker is able to elevate privileges and there is currently no patch available from ASUS. So your only real option is to just uninstall this software. Now, ASUS isn't the only company that is having issues. The company that discovered the vulnerability secure auth found similar problems with equipment made by Gigabyte. It affects Gigabyte motherboards and graphics cards. Again, can lead to privilege escalation and no patch is available. Now, apparently in both cases, Secure Auth wasn't really able to communicate with the vendor in order to disclose the vulnerability, which is why they now went public. However, they also went public with proof of concept exploit code, which of course makes exploitation of these vulnerabilities quite a bit more likely. Now during the holidays, there is always a sort of a chance that the bad guys try to take advantage of the increase in online shopping and such uh, by launching various campaigns that target online merchants. Uh, one example that bleeping computer is reporting about is Apple's App Store. Now that's always a favorite a phishing target, of course. This latest wave arrives as an email with a PDF as an attachment, where the PDF is actually in itself not really malicious, not using an exploit, instead just tricking the user into clicking on a link. The PDF claims to be a receipt, receipt for a recent App Store purchase. And of course, they're counting here on users that don't remember having purchased this particular application and they're now clicking on the link in order to figure out how to possibly block that purchase. The goal here is to fish App Store credentials. And then of course, yes, the bad guy will likely use whatever payment methods that you have linked to the App Store in order to buy applications. Now, one great tool, of course, to monitor your networks and protect your users is Kibana and with that elastic search. Back in November, researchers at CyberArk found an interesting path traversal vulnerability in Kibana that can be used to include local files. So an attacker could possibly include code that's already on the system into and get it to execute on a different page, for example, requiring less authentication or no authentication. It's not quite as bad as sort of a remote file include where I can include arbitrary remote files, but I have to find a file that's already on the system. Well, a Chinese crew by the name of Slow Mist now came up with a proof of concept exploit that will execute JavaScript code using this particular vulnerability. Exploitation is actually actually quite trivial. All you need is you need to have some access to the Kibana console API. The exploit fit in a tweet. So again, fairly easy to actually apply this particular exploit. Kibana before version 6.4.3 or 5.6.13 are vulnerable. And well, then more hope for victims of a ransomware. We have decryptors for two more families of ransomware, InsaneCrypt and Everb1. So in case you have any infected machines around and still held on to the files, well, here's a solution for you to hopefully recover some of these files. I'll also link in the show notes to the ID ransomware side of the Malware Hunter team. That side can be quite helpful helpful in order to identify what ransomware your particular system was affected by. 
And well, uh, next week, of course, uh, we have the Christmas holiday. There will only be probably two, maybe three podcasts uh, next week. So no podcast Monday and Tuesday. Now, if you wonder what to do with all of that extra time, KringleCon, the Sands Holiday Hack Channel Challenge, went live. And uh, yes, you can now participate in it. So again, links you'll find in the show notes. And well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.